So designer drugs, they're the bane of our existence because people think that they're legal highs. All that really means is that the DEA can't keep up with it. When you write something on the package, like not for human consumption, in some places they're sold you know, right over the counter. Police know exactly what it is and they don't have probable cause to do something about it. They have all sorts of fun names like stain remover because that's what I want to do. I want to eat stain remover. Um, the active ingredients change constantly. Some of these drugs, last time I looked, have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different variants of the same thing. So tiny little changes in the, in the chemical formula. And they don't tend to come up on the urine tox. Also, when you do a send out lab, they usually are only looking for six or seven or eight or nine variations. So a negative value, even on a send out lab, you go away somewhere and say, yeah, we test for that synthetic cannabinoid. Comes back negative, that doesn't mean much to me. If it comes back positive, it's like finding a unicorn. <laughs> oh my God, we got it. So in this particular patient, the highlighted symptoms are the ones that this one was complaining of. The jaw clenching and the teeth grinding is a dead giveaway, right? So bath salts are generally a synthetic stimulant and they're not that. We've done this before. So bath salts, and this is not meant to be an exhaustive list of everything you find in bath salts. And a lot of stuff is just random and weird, but you'll find that they contain methylone, which has a lot of similarities to ecstasy, MDMA. They will also contain mephedrone, which is a lot like methamphetamine, and they will contain MDPV, which is a lot like cocaine.